Hey, it's Pamela. At some point I should go live because that way, you know, you can just go live and get a comment. But sometimes when I'm in a hurry and I got a lot of things going on, which is most of the time I just do a video. So just like you're standing in front of a pool or an ocean or somewhere you just don't really, you're, you put your toe in the water, but you're like, you know what, I'm just going to jump. So I'm going to jump right in, okay? Now, for those of you that may get hurt by the content of some of the things I'm going to say about Mother's Day and what moms are and what they represent and who the real baby mamas are, if you've got already some feelings this year that you haven't dealt with because you haven't been accountable, accountable meaning you were a good mom, okay? You were that mom that was young, which was me. And uh, you grew up kind of with your kids and made good choices, and they're there for you now. People just can't understand that. So for some people, they haven't been parents, okay? Now, my mother told us, you don't have to be a mother to go in the delivery room. And I, I know what she was saying. Sorry, I'm putting my makeup on, folks. I got to multitask here. Um <clears throat> She was saying that because of um, a, a female can't have a baby doesn't mean that she doesn't isn't a mother. In other words, like you don't have to be a mother to go in the delivery room, meaning that there's plenty of people that are mothers to children that they didn't uh, give birth to, but are wonderful mothers. And sometimes they have to frost it up a little more and say better than the real mothers that were, which could be a true statement. But it's not always a true statement, okay? Meaning that that being a mother, if you don't have, like, uh, the experience of feeling that or, you know, putting that time in with your children, okay, and doing the best that you can and sacrificing, you might want to step out of that ring because it's a real talk. It's kind of like a talk people don't want to hear about. They're like, okay, so anyway, here we go. Mother's Day to me is a beautiful thing, but it's got to go back to the accountability, and this is why. Accountability is people that have been around and saw the sacrifices that you've made, okay? Sacrifices meaning... When you sacrifice your time for a child, like I did at a young age. By the way, this is harder than I thought, put makeup on and talk about. I'm going to still go at it. If you've sacrificed your time, even as a young woman or girl, and kept your children, and uh, did the best that you could, no matter what age you were, I'm coming at it from this angle because I was so young that I'm, it's a passion of mine now. Because I've met people that have given their children away and they've got every excuse, every reason why they did. Okay, now in some situations I agree with them, like the kid would be better off. Okay, so in 10, 25 years after you gave your kid away to a church, the Mormons, or whoever you chose, and... You haven't changed your life, right? So you're still partying. You're still doing drugs because we're going to go back to why you gave your kid away, right? Didn't you give your kid away because they'd have a better life? Well, why can't you make a better life? I mean, I am a baby mama and I do get a badge of honor here today, folks, and I'm going to take it. So what happens is you stand in front of places when you're young with the baby on your hip. You know there's some good looking guys in that party, but you can't go in. You know why? Because you got a baby on your hip. Did you know I've done that before? Yeah. I did that with my baby Ryan. Do I dare say who was with me that did go in? Yeah. So um, if you know good looking guys are in there and the party's on and you smell some herb and you, you know the guys are really cute and you just want to go in there and have a good time. But you're thinking, you know, if I go in there, I got my baby with me, okay? My baby don't belong in a place like this. So I dropped off somebody that I know to this party, and I didn't go in. Did I regret it? 
that night probably. I was like, well, I want to have fun. But you don't go. You make that choice as a parent. You make that choice as a parent and say, you know what? I'm not going in there. Something could go wrong. Something wouldn't be right. And I would suffer from that. So I've made choices like that in my life. As a parent, I could probably go on and on the things that I've gone through as a parent. The problem is when your kids grow up, okay? And maybe other people that you've met are lax in that department. But always know you're a good example. There's some shame involved when people take the birthright of a child. Like they don't want to sit down and talk to them about who their real mommy and daddies are. That's another thing. You see it constantly on TV. Constantly. In fact, they... Uh, they had a show specifically for parents that never told their children who their real parents were. It's so beautiful, but it's late. And it's like 50 to 75 years almost later that they're like, wow, they did it, you know, in the ancient days. That's a great story about Moses not having to know his birthright because he could have been killed. So they put him in the, uh, the river. You know, and the Egyptian women found him and hugged him and dressed him all up. But he had a Hebrew blanket, didn't he? And Moses was a Jew. And in life, sometimes when I get serious like this, I sacrifice for my children. I did. And God knows it. And I know it. And at the end of the day, I did the best I could, which was a good job. Back in the day, I didn't even buy pampers for a few of them. You know, I folded them and washed them. We had diaper buckets. I always thought when I was young, you know what? My kids aren't going to outsmart me, but they can sometimes. And I made my share of mistakes. But I always, I always reconciled. I always found the balance. But I didn't leave my kids. I didn't give them up, and I didn't turn my back on them. I always know that if people are suffering, they're mean. Have I been mean in my life? At times. But I've always been a wonderful mother. And for women that are barren, that chose to never have children, they are a little bit different. In the way that maybe they got dogs or puppies or something to love because we're born females. And as children, God did equip us with those type of emotions. And men have them too, but it's a manly way. But as a mother, I can speak on this subject. And I can tell you, it's a wonderful thing to feel a baby kicking inside your belly. And then when they put that baby in your arms. So it's Miss Cool, not wanting to get too emotional here, but this Mother's Day, try to be accountable. And if you've made some mistakes with your children, come clean with them. You know why people don't want to be accountable? Do you know why? Because it hurts. Because you have to admit your wrongs. Just like I say about that cop that killed George Floyd, the only peace he'll ever have in his life is to come forward and say I was wrong. He was wrong. I've been wrong. Not a murderer, but you can murder somebody's soul by not being honest and not looking back and, you know, doing the best you could with your children and not walking away. If you've given your children away and you've walked away from them, I ask you now, what have you done through the years to make that better? Do you still have that behavior or are you using the excuse they would have had a better life? I guess they could have had a better life if you gave your kids away because anybody that would was having a moment of like, wow. So try to reconnect. I don't know what that's like, but I can tell you I was a wonderful mother and I still am. There's no such word as retire. You don't retire from being a parent. You're a parent till they lay in your grave. And then on the headstone, it says mother. And, it, and I was loved. And I loved them. And they were the children that I had that no one can take. And it's a blood right. And it's something that's a gift. And there's lots of people I met in my life. I, would, I dated one guy. He was like, my mother told me not to date a chick that had kids, right? Do you know I still know that person? Do you know that he's never had children and that he could have had a son or something with me? But since he was brainwashed to think that children or other people's children would be bad, there's wonderful stepfathers, 
wonderful adopted parents that adopt children people didn't want. The point what I'm trying to say is, stop for a moment and look at the people that are real mothers this Mother's Day. And I can say that. I can relish and be proud of who I am and where I came from and what I did. And I know, not to sound selfish, conceited, or at all about me, but I did a wonderful job with my children. And you can look at them now. But parents out there that deflect, that have been absent, they've abandoned their children, they're kind of looking for some type of balance, maybe a good parent that they can put down or, or say things about because they haven't been accountable. Be accountable. Start over. You know, I've had to start over every day of my life when I blurt out something or I have a meltdown. As long as you just keep getting up. So it's Miss Cool saying, get up. Get up. Be accountable. Have you been there for your kids? Have you been there for your grandchildren? Are you still working on you? Do you know life's a lot easier and better if you work on yourself by helping others, especially your own children? So try not to pick at other people and other mothers and grandmoms that are doing a great job to deflect for your non-accountability of being there. And for you people that aren't real mom and dads being like, you know, the, the bloodline, you're wonderful too. But try not to pick on each other. And this Mother's Day, I was a baby mom at 15. A wonderful mother. I went through a lot. I kept my son. And uh, it's beautiful to name a child and comb their hair and hug them and love them till they fall asleep. And they're no, there's nothing, absolutely nothing that smells better than a baby's breath when they're first born. I think that's why they named those little petite white flowers, baby's breath. It's intoxicating. It's life. It's love. And God bless you today on this Mother's Day. If you drive past a park and see someone swinging their kids and know that you gave your child up for adoption. But if you're still partying or you're still having excuses or you're that really great person that's looking for your child again to meet, I wish you the best. I wish you the best. But that child has a right to know, just like Moses found out, that he was a Jew. God bless.